Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Margaritas with Margarita Chang, CFP Pro. I'm Hope Katz Gibbs, producer of the show on the Incandescent Radio Network and Incandescent TV. Today's guest is the amazing Dr. Megan McCoy. She is going to talk to us about the power of financial therapy. She is an assistant professor at Kansas State University's personal financial planning program. So amazing. And she teaches courses in undergraduate, master's, and doctorate levels, which focus on financial well being, financial therapy, and couples' dynamics regarding financial therapy. Megan holds a BA in psychology, an MA in marriage and family therapy, and a PhD in human development and family science, with an emphasis in marriage and family therapy. Well, we all totally need you, Megan. So take it away, Ms. Rita. Well, thank you so much, Hope. And Megan here is to celebrating you for being here. Um, wow, the importance of financial therapy. And for our listeners and viewers, if Dr. Megan McCoy's bio wasn't impressive enough, she also serves on the board of directors of the Financial Therapy Association. We know we're in good hands. So welcome, Megan. Thanks so much for having me. Of course. So let's get right to it. Um, how did you end up with the focus on financial therapy? Yes, it was absolute luck. So I went to my mat. So first of all, I knew I wanted to be a therapist since I was a kid. Like, think about that Charlie Brown kid with like the 25 cent therapy thing. That was me. So therapy, marriage and family therapy degree was the obvious. And then after I got my marriage and family therapy degree, I felt like I needed more skills. I wanted to be a better therapist. So I mistakenly went to a PhD program, not realizing PhD programs are set and theory classes and so i'm about to drop out when the financial therapy association came to town and they gave us grad students a free entry and i saw a live demonstration of financial therapy by rick Taylor and dave jensen and i was like oh my gosh i need this desperately for my life and this whole time my clients have had these underlying presenting problems of that are related to money that i always avoided that absolutely needs financial therapy. So I dove, I dove in from there on. So it was all luck. <laughs> that is truly amazing. And, um, you know, a lot of people don't actually even know what financial therapy is. So I think that is good for you to address for viewers and listeners. What is financial therapy? So it's so um, happenstance that it started in 2008, right after the Great Recession. What happens, all these financial planners turn to their therapist colleagues and were like, our clients are so emotionally drained and grieving the loss of their homes and so scared. And all the therapists were like, I'm so glad you said that because all my clients are just talking about money and I have no idea how to help them. And so planners and therapists said, how can we connect the fields? How can we learn from each other? How can we steal what works best for your field and apply it to our work? And how can we learn from each other? So financial therapy is now an association of financial planners, financial counselors, marriage and family therapists, psychologists, and all kind of similar people that working together to steal from each other's Rolodex of interventions and help each other's clients work through the same. Thank you for that. And for everyone, I joined FTA, I want to say 2000 or 2021. I find the content and the community so helpful. Um, what courses do you teach at AC? Yes, I'm so lucky. I get to teach all the fun classes. So my T-Bells are always so high and I'm like, it's just because I'm teaching. Love and money, financial well-being, money and relationships. So I really do look at the intersection between our finances and our relational health. And you know what? I, I believe this. Everyone deserves access to competent ethical advice. Most importantly, everybody deserves to be financially well. Oh right? my goodness. Yes. And what's cool about those classes is I have let's say a marriage and family therapist student or a human development and family science student who takes it because of the love or because of the well-being. And I sneak in all this financial literacy so they get roped into learning their finances, right? And then I have financial planners who sign up for it because of the money, because of the financial parts of the class. And then I sneak in all this relational health stuff in. So people who that usually avoid financial education or usually avoid some of those like ethical classes now get access to it by access. No, absolutely. I know as a certified financial planner, sometimes people ask me questions. Should we send our kid to private school? I mean, if they have only one child, they do have the economic needs. And I say, you know what? To be honest, you have the financial needs, the economic needs, but this is really a couple's question. I can't tell you what to do with your money. It's your money. 
Um, so with that in mind, um, what are some articles that you've published and what are you particularly proud of? Yes, I um, recently have um, published an article in the Journal of Financial Planning two months ago where we studied what creates trust and commitment in client planner relationships? What are some of the things that we can um, integrate into our practice that will foster trust and commitment? What are some of the things that maybe we're doing accidentally that kind of inhibits it? So I'm really excited about that article. That is part of a much larger study that I did in partnership with SPA and Money Quotient organization, where we looked at not only the trust and commitment factors, but also things like how did virtual engagement do planners and clients want the same level of virtual engagement? So do clients, well, we found out what more virtual engagements than planners. We looked at diversity, equity, and inclusion issues around what are the profile of our clients, what are the profiles of our planners, are we moving strides forward to inclusivity? And we looked at what else we looked at. Um, so many life planning questions about like how important is it to check in with values? How is it important is it to ask them about their personality type? Like how important is it to understand their money story to get a good relationship with your clients? So that is a really fun study, and we're actually replicating it in Canada next week. So we'll have US and Canadian planners and clients for big data team. That does sound really exciting, and I'd be curious to see, you know, cultural nuances. Absolutely. And financial planning looks different in every part of the world. One of our um, requirements for our PhD program is every year our doctoral students go to a different country and meet with their financial planning um, like programs and learn about what research they're focused on and, and what are the real life issues that financial planners are facing, just so we can get a better view of what financial planning I know that you're so excited about that project. Um, if you're allowed to share, what are some other projects in the work? Yes, I am been meaning to for a while and I keep on saying it. So I'm gonna keep on saying it so everybody holds me accountable, but I am really desperate to study financial infidelity more. So financial infidelity is secrets we tell or don't tell our partner. And there's some big ones that as financial planners, you'll be faced with things like an estate settlement, finding out there's debt that the partner didn't disclose, or um, people have had like clients having extra income that they hide from their partners. And those big ones are obviously so emotionally destroying for our relationship. But I think what I want to see is the smaller, minor Like my parents are absolutely lovely, but I heard all the time growing up, don't tell daddy we went to McDonald's or let's not tell daddy we went shopping or things like that. And it's not gender specific. I think sometimes both men, women, and all genders will will purchase things and either have shame about it or they don't have the power to get it or they don't feel like the need is good enough so they hide from their partner. And I want to uncover that so that it can be an avenue of intervention rather than something like blaming or things like that. The financial infidelity. And, and sometimes there's reasons for that too. By no means like condoning or condemning it. As an example, one of my clients didn't tell his wife that he had credit card debt. In his mind, it was only five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. In her mind, it was a very high amount. But the reason why he didn't tell his wife about his credit card debt is this was a situation where she wanted to be a full time stay at home mom and transition to a new mm -hmm. career. And if he told her about that, he knows that she would continue to do a job she didn't like. And he had a plan for his debt. Three thousand was going to come from the tax refund. And he'd pay off the other 2000 with 0%. So I tell people, you know, as planners, it was a difficult situation, but um, the clients mentioned that that actually brought them together. Oh, yeah, because there's so many layers. Him trying to protect her from her, him trying to protect her because he might have lower rates of financial anxiety. Um, that's another part of the study that we found 90% 90, 90 of our sample of financial planning clients. These are, we know, viewed higher net worth individuals who have someone saying they're okay and their financial anxiety was just that's wild to me. So I think it is so many loving things that he did to his partner that it was okay. But my dream is that partners can be more transparent and express more openly with each other because I think that's probably a sign of him protecting her in other ways and secrets to save her when really it'd be so much greater if she could save herself. Absolutely. So remember how you said um, 
the project that you're most interested in. If you had funding for a dream research project, what would it be? And everybody, maybe we need to have GoFundMe or crowdsource <laughs> to help more people be able to do research to help our clients oh. and society at large. So um, it, it says for one dream project, but you know what? You can dream big. Maybe there's <laughs> one, two, or three. Yes. I, I, what I'm most fascinated with right now and what I would love to do research on is that there's great research on what's called neuroeconomics, but how our brain works under financial decision making that I think is fascinating. Like one of them is that what we find is that savers and spenders tend to have similar levels of materialism. But you would think, you know, you've had those clients who spend so much money, you're like, they have to be materialistic. But what it turns out is under brain scanning, is that their pleasure center lights up when they shop, whereas savers' pain center lights up. So their brain chemistry is like making them spend differently. And there's so many studies we could do to explore like how do we make their pleasure centers like light up a little less? And how do we make his pain centers light up a little bit more so that we can get couples on the same page? So I would love to do some neuro, neuroeconomic, neuro financial planning studies in the future. Absolutely. So where can we, um, this is an opportunity for you to share more about your work at FTA, your work as a therapist, and your work as um, assistant professor. Um, where can people learn more about your work and follow your work? Oh, yes. On LinkedIn, I'm most active on LinkedIn. And I hope everybody finds me and follows me. I love making connections um, with practitioners because I feel like so often researchers live in like just numbers and words and we lose the whole point of things, which is making practice better. So I would love to connect with everybody on LinkedIn. And, um, I hope everybody is a subscriber to the Financial Planning Review, which is the CFP Awards Journal, which I help edit. And I hope everybody joins FTA and continues to go to our webinars and coffee chats. And it's a great community. Well, wonderful. So tell us more about FTA. Remember, I haven't been a member that long, but you serve on the board. So why FTA? Um, I love FTA. FTA is an organization that really is trying to provide education and trainings and resources for practitioners. The journal is completely free. The Journal of Financial Therapy is completely free. In each issue, there'll be book reviews, so great books to read for yourself or to recommend to clients. There's also profiles of practitioners and research issues so that you can learn about how people are integrating client psychology into their financial planning practice or who to refer to for therapy services who's working in the therapy world you know all these great profiles um, and uh, we have webinars once a month I'm always looking for webinar um, topics and and so our um, open communication between members is great you can post and say I want to see a webinar on this and I will chase down a speaker to do it for us and then finally, my favorite part of FTA is we have these weekly coffee chats where financial professionals, mental health professionals, we all jump on Zoom on Thursdays and kind of just talk about like, what are we doing with clients? What do we want to do? What kind of training do we want to do next? And just share information. So FTA is great. No, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for being here with us. Now back to you, Hope. Thank you, Megan. Wow. Totally amazing. You know. I went back to graduate school at 55 to study uh, positive psychology at Claremont University. And I am blown away and endlessly amazed at people who can do research. I can't, <laughs> <laughs> but your work sounds fascinating. And Rita and I can't wait to share all of it with our readers and our listeners and our viewers. So cheers to you. Here's a margarita to you. And thank you for being with us this week on Margaritas with Margarita Chang. And to our audience, thank you for joining us. I'm Hope Katz Gibbs, producer of the show on Incandescent Radio and Incandescent TV. Please check margaritacheng.com for this, this podcast and video and more. So we will talk to you all soon. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much for being part of our Incandescent Radio and TV family. This is Hope Katz Gibbs, founder of Incandescent Incorporated, the PR and publishing company for women entrepreneurs. Our Incandescent Radio and TV shows are brought to you by our advertisers and clients. Margaritas with Margarita Chang, CFP Pro, brings us 15 minutes of tips 
every Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern on Facebook Live, where you'll meet experts who are helping us flex our financial muscles. Find all of the episodes at margaritachang.com. You'll also meet intuitive psychotherapist Kara Keem, who interviews therapists and other intuitive guides from around the world. Learn more at karakeem.com. And you're going to love social justice expert Karen Hanrahan, CEO of the San Francisco-based Glide Memorial Foundation. She bridges the gap from local impact to global change on her thought leadership show on Incandescent Radio. Learn more about Karen at karenhanrahan.com. You're also going to love Alina Leal, founder of the radical wellness journaling company, zenitjournals.com. Alina asks, have you tried to journal but found it hard to keep up? Zenit makes it easier to journal for your wellness. With Zenit, you can customize your journal with prompts that speak to you. No more blank pages. Your Zenit is your personalized space to take care of yourself. Website, zenitjournals.com. Feel it, write it, Zenit. You'll also meet amazing Tracy Schott, founder of Voices for Change. Tracy is determined to change the world and end domestic violence. Learn more at voicesforchange.net. And we are so thrilled to be publishing a book for Angela Mitchell, who is the tech expert of case management. And she's also the founder of this fabulous organization, Kids Code 2. She is determined to teach kids to code computers. Talk about teaching a kid to fish. We invite you to discover and peruse all the Incandescent Incorporated websites, the magazine for women, by women, about women, incandescentwomen.com. Our health and wellness magazine is TheIncandescent.com, the business of mind, body, spirit, soul, and heart. Our YouTube channel is Incandescent.tv. And you can learn about our PR and book publishing services at Incandescent.us. If you'd like to have your own radio and video show, check us out at IncandescentRadio.com, where you can see what we can do for you. These podcasts are also featured on iTunes, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Our podcasts are produced by Brandy Wilsker. Our videos are produced by Nelson Benitez. Our website developer is Max Tupoy, and our incandescent illustrator and designer is Michael Flynn. If you'd like to learn more, please send me an email, hope at hopegibbs.com. Here is to your incredible, indelible, incandescent success. Much love and may.